5G and autonomous. Two emerging technologies on everybody's mind, but what do they have to do with each other? Check out this video to find out. Hello, I'm Dan Trudeau. I'm the VP and Executive Recruiter at PRA USA, and today I want to talk to you about the relationship between 5G and autonomous driving. As I mentioned in the intro, both of these subjects are being thought about by a lot of people right now. Of course, 5G is much further along than autonomous driving. Uh, while we have some autonomous driving features in our car, and we are capable of doing a certain level of autonomous driving right now, they're still working out the details, they're still working out how exactly they're going to achieve fully autonomous driving. It's, it's very much an idea that they're going after right now as opposed to a concrete thing right in front of us. 5G, on the other hand, is being rolled out now. If you're in certain areas with certain phones, you can get 5G right now. So one of those things is more solid, which is 5G. The interesting thing is, as 5G advances and becomes more common and the 5G networks spread out more, it could very much be a fundamental part of making autonomous driving a reality. So let's talk about three areas where 5G and autonomous are linked together and how 5G will help make autonomous a living reality. Now the first and most obvious place 5G will have an effect in autonomous driving is your personal information, uh, infotainment, entertainment, etc. If you think about what we already have in cars now in terms of streaming music services, podcasts, information coming in, directions, all that stuff that we've got going in our car right now data-wise, now imagine if you don't have to keep your hands on the wheel or eyes on the road. People commuting to work in the morning can probably clean out their email before they're even in the office on the drive there. Be able to read books, catch up on the clips from last night's TV show, etc. All that stuff because of 5G will be you know, almost instantaneous, uninterrupted. It's going to be a, a, a constant stream of info going through your car. So that's the obvious effect that 5G will have, though it goes well beyond that too. Now the second and far more critical area where 5G is going to work with autonomous driving is in offloading the processing. Now what does that mean exactly? Well the first thing you have to think about is that autonomous driving is very closely connected to electric vehicle technology. Uh, the autonomous systems that are being developed today are not being developed with, you know, gas combustion engine cars in mind. They're being developed with EVs, electric vehicles in mind, as the automakers have all committed to that future. Now, the biggest issue with electric vehicles right now, or I should say one of the biggest issues with electric vehicles right now, is range. How far can I drive my car? How many miles? How long can I drive my car? until the drain gets down to the point where I have to recharge it. Obviously, the further you can drive, the longer you can drive without recharging, the better. Now, autonomous driving requires a very significant amount of electronic hardware in the vehicle to, you know, both take all the information in, process it, and then control the vehicle. Now, that hardware creates a very big power drain on an electric vehicle. So that issue of range becomes even bigger when you've got all this processing going on, using up power that could be used for other things, for propulsion and everything else going on in the car. So your range is being taken back by that processing. So what does 5G do? 5G allows the car, because of the constant flow, almost instantaneous flow of communication, it allows to take some of that processing and offload it, push it off to the cloud or what have you. So that data processing and stuff like that is not being done in the hardware of the car itself, but elsewhere because the communication is so instantaneous. It goes up, makes a decision, comes back to the car, the car does what it needs to do. All of a sudden now that power drain is way less, which helps extend the range of the vehicle. So in this way, 5G makes a real difference in terms of the performance of these autonomous electric vehicles. And it's not just range that this helps with. Think of this, we have all this hardware, right, in your electronic autonomous vehicle. Um, think about your phone or your computer. What happens after a few years? That hardware goes out of date. It's slower. It doesn't work as well. Now, with your phone or your PC, that's a real pain. In an autonomous vehicle, that could be life or death. In other words, the hardware has got to stay working well. It has to stay current. 5G allows the hardware on your vehicle to not go out of date so quickly because out there in the cloud, which it's communicating with via 5G, updates are happening all the time. It can compensate for the hardware in your car. In other words, 
you're not going to have to change your car every few years like you do with your phone. No one wants to keep having to buy a new car every three years or to just gut the thing and put new guts into it. That's not practical. So this communication not only extends the range of the electric autonomous vehicle through less power usage, it also allows the hardware on that car to last longer, to, be, to, to work better for longer so that the car itself can last longer. So again, you don't have to be buying a new vehicle or you know getting all the hardware replaced every few years, which the average person, frankly, just isn't going to be able to afford. The third area to cover here is environmental communications. Now, what does this refer to? This refers to the way the autonomous vehicle interacts and reacts to the environment around it. If we put a vehicle on the road today with the optimum autonomous technology we have available right now, what we would have in terms of these communications is called mobility and isolation with some V2V or vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communications. Now, essentially what that means is every vehicle is sort of like its own island. It's figuring out what's around it through, you know, radar, LIDAR, visual, etc. And it's also got some communications with some other cars, vehicle to vehicle communications to say, you know, you're coming up on a car that's moving slower, so why don't you start slowing down now? Things like that. The next step beyond that is V2X, which is, you know, vehicle to vehicle, vehicle to street sign. There's communications and everything that's communicating back to the car. For instance, uh, not only are you getting signals from the cars around you saying how close they are, the speed they're going, etc. If there's a traffic light down the road, it's sending out a signal letting you know, I'm turning yellow in 20 seconds, so your car can start to figure that out and react. 5G gives us the ability to have full mobility and communication with the entire environment, the entire community. What does that mean? That means, yes, it's still getting the, the visual and LIDAR and radar signals, plus it's communicating with the cars, it's communicating with the signs. It's also communicating broadly out. Well, you're getting signals that five miles down the road there's an accident, uh, let's start rerouting right now. Uh, let's say you're meeting somebody else and you're trying to find a center point to meet. Your car is communicating over the you know, over the cloud with that car and you're figuring out the best route for both of you to go to meet. It's just full information for the car that gives its gives it knowledge that we could never have as human drivers. So it's optimum communication. It's figuring out what's going on over the entire landscape. It knows what's happening. Like, let's say you, you're going to the drugstore, you're, you gotta pick up a prescription. Um, it's communicating saying, oh, you know what? That store closes in 10 minutes, so let's make sure we have a route that gets us there in 10 minutes. That level of you know thinking in your car with 5G that becomes possible, which leads to better coordination uh, better infrastructure management. Everything just moves much smoother because everything, and I mean everything, is in constant communication with you and your vehicle. So as you can see, there's a lot of potential, a lot of great things on the horizon for both 5G and autonomous and how they can work together. But as is always the case with these things, there are still a lot of challenges. One of the big challenges, of course, is the availability and reliability of 5G everywhere. Because of course, in order for this to work, 5G coverage has to be literally everywhere and it has to be reliable. It, it can't fail. It can't break down. Um, you know, I'm sure, of course, they're going to have, you know, backup systems in place and stuff like that, but that has to be a rare circumstance. 5G coverage has to be consistent. No matter where you're going, you need to be able to have that connection for these features to work. If you think about 4G and going to certain places through certain terrains and stuff, how you'll lose your cell signal, there's a whole lot of consequences when your car is using that communication network to do its basic functions. So that's challenge number one. The second big challenge is infrastructure. With a lot of these new vehicle technologies that we're talking about, EVs, autonomous, etc., infrastructure is a big deal. I mean, I was talking to you about lights that send a signal to the car and the car is communicating with each other and stores and different locations communicating into the network with your car. All of that requires a very big infrastructure overhaul, which they haven't even really begun to plan for. Another big challenge has to do with regulation. There are going to be issues that come up with this that we're going to discover as we go along. So we have to figure out not only who's responsible for the regulations around this stuff to make them consistent, to make them safe, but also how these regulations can change as we discover things, as technology changes and stuff like that. We're talking about moving vehicles, literally life or death. So as things change, we need to have people in charge of making sure that regulations and management of this sort of technology 
is up to date, is consistent, etc. So not only do we have to figure out what regulations we need to get this thing started, we need to have something in place that makes sure that these regulations stay up to date. So these are big challenges in here and there's still unanswered questions that come with this 5G autonomous relationship. Despite all these challenges, there's a very bright future for 5G autonomous and their relationship together. How quickly it comes together, we're not sure. We just know that it remains a priority. It has a lot of potential to change the way even our society functions the way we move around, the way we go from place to place, the way we function together. So it's exciting to see what changes come with that, how we evolve, how we develop with these technologies. So there's a lot on the horizon. Again, there's a lot of challenges that come with that, a lot of uncertainty, but a lot of promise as well. Make sure to like, share, and most of all, subscribe to the PRA USA YouTube channel so we can keep you on top of technology developments like this. And not only that, we can help you develop a career in these areas and manage a career in these areas using our 30 plus years of knowledge in this sector. Use that knowledge, use that experience to have the future that you deserve.